Okay, let's talk about the Pythagorean identity. Now, it comes from the unit circle. And the unit circle, what that is, is it's a circle centered at the origin, at 0, 0, that has a radius of unit 1. So the equation of that circle is x squared plus y squared equals 1. And what we have here is just a portion of that unit circle, the first quadrant basically cut out and shown here. Um, so if we have x squared plus y squared equals 1 is the equation of this unit circle that goes all the way around. Let's try to define cosine of t and sine of t when our central angle here is t. So what's going to happen here is we already know about SOHCAHTOA, right? That cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So we can say in our triangle, that's going to be x over 1, which can be reduced down to just x. So where we see an x over here, we can replace that with a cosine. So we can say cosine of t raised to the second power. And thinking about sine of t, sine is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So y over 1, or that's just simplifies down to y. So over in our equation here, where we see the y being raised to the second power, you can replace the y with a sine of t and then raise it to the second power. Now this does simplify down that instead of saying cosine of t all raised to the second power, an easier way or a different way to write it is just you say cosine squared of t. And very similarly with sine, we can write sine squared of t. So that's kind of how we derive the Pythagorean identity is it's based on the unit circle and the equation for that. Um, sometimes we also reverse this and say sine squared plus cosine squared in the other order is equal to one. So let's use this to try to locate cosine if we're given that sine of t is three sevenths. And we also know that t is, this angle is gonna put it into the second quadrant for our terminal side. All right, so using the Pythagorean identity, as you can see, we have cosine squared plus sine squared equals one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to fill in sine of t equals 3 sevenths. So I'm going to leave this as cosine squared of t plus, and I'm visualizing this as sine of t squared. So I'm going to replace the sine of t with 3 sevenths. That's still equal to 1 over on the right hand side. So now we have cosine squared of t plus I'm visualizing this as two copies of 3 sevenths multiplied together. So 3 sevenths times 3 sevenths, we get three times three for our numerator gets us nine. And seven times seven makes 49 for our denominator equals one. And now I'm gonna make this into a power equation by getting the cosine squared on one side by itself. So I'm gonna move this nine 49ths to the other side by subtracting it. But as I do that, I'm also gonna rewrite my one so it has 49 over 49 is equivalent to the one. So when I subtract off this fraction, I'll already have a common denominator. So I'm rewriting the one as 49 over 49, subtracting the 9 49ths to the other side. This will leave us with cosine squared of t equals 40 49ths. All right, now we've made it into a power equation. Our next goal is to get rid of the square and get cosine of t on one side all by itself. So the next thing I'll do is go ahead and apply a square root to both sides. But as we do that, we wanna be careful about the plus and minus, that we applied a square root to both sides, so we should include a positive and negative case here. We're gonna determine which one should be applied in our case in just a second. All right, so thinking about this, we already have the graph given to us. So you can see that we're in the second quadrant and we're trying to find the x value or the cosine value here. For any x value in the second quadrant or the third quadrant for that matter, we have to move to the left to get there. That's gonna indicate that we have a negative um, x value or we already mentioned that cosine represents our x value. So this is gonna be a negative um, in front of our square root. The next thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm working on simplifying this down is put the negative out in front, but because I had a square root over this fraction, I can apply a square root to the numerator by itself and the denominator by itself individually. So from here, we have cosine of t equals, further reducing down, I'm gonna visualize that numerator in a factored form as four times 10. 
And I'm utilizing four because um, four is a perfect square. It's the largest perfect square that's a factor of 40. Um, the square root of 49, by the way, is seven. So I'm gonna reduce down that denominator just to be seven. All right, from here, we can say the negative comes along. This is really the square root of four times the square root of 10. We're allowed to split that up as I did there. And now we can reduce down by taking the square root of four works out to be two multiplied by the square root of 10 all over seven. All right, and that's gonna be the most reduced down our cosine of t is gonna get in this case. So personally, I'm not a huge fan of using the Pythagorean identity to come up with this um, value, but it's certainly a valid way to go ahead about doing this. The other way I like visualizing this is drawing a triangle and going about it that way. Um, so I'll do that in a subsequent video to make sure we're all on track and understand where that comes from. But hope this helps out on using the Pythagorean identity and getting the introduction to it. Good luck.